Hi there, my name is Brian McInerney. I'm the hydrologist with the National Weather Service. Today is Tuesday, April 7, 2015. Uh, the date on this says April 6, 2015. This is the exact uh, briefing and in the shortened form that I gave the Utah water users yesterday and uh, members of the media. So let's talk about where we are with water supply as of early April. And we've seen this before, but let's talk about our weather patterns and the precip anomaly and the dominant weather feature that's brought us here. And if you've seen these briefings before, these are the winds at about 11,500 during the month of January. This is the average flow. This weather feature right here is a large high pressure that has blocked any storms, any, any moisture, any dynamics into the western U.S., shunted it north, and then it's dropped down into the southeast and up the east coast. This part of the country has been very wet, very cold, really, for the past two years in the, in the winter seasons, whereas the western U.S. has been under this high pressure ridge. And I thought, how did this look last year at this time during January? And I dug out the data. And this is what I saw. It's almost an exact replica of where we were last year. My feelings are we would have seen this in 2013 and 2012 also. So let's go back and see our precip anomaly starting October, which is the beginning of the water year. Dark, uh, uh, warmer colors indicate um, less precip than normal. And if you look at Utah in this red area, it brings us down into maybe 20% of normal or 10% or even zero in, in the far southeast. When we look up into November, we see more of the same with the warm colors all the way across Utah uh, and absence of storms. And this was tough because now we're starting the year off in, in poor form. Then in December, about Christmas time, we had a series of storms that was very helpful. And if you look at Utah, we were in the maybe oh 150 to 170 percent range in some areas and things were looking up at that point then we moved into january and we went back into less than normal precipitation in the mountains in this area here in this dark area 30 to 50 percent um, and, it, and it's coming after a very dry fall notice california continued just to have the worst winter ever then we moved into february more of the same this red color uh, a lot of maybe 20 to 30 percent ranges in Utah. Then we moved into March and we had a little bit down in southern Utah and that storm uh, system actually had about five inches of water associated with it. Looked like maybe that was going to help a little bit. Then we went into uh, the beginning of April and that gain was wiped out just due to the dry warm conditions. So there you have it as far as the precip goes. Now let's take a look at the temperature anomaly. And really the temperature anomaly is the big driver during this winter. And when you look at the first 13 days of December, it was the warmest we've ever seen here at the Salt Lake City Airport. Then that was followed by 48 consecutive above average temperature days. And then we went into the, the warmest February on record in the state and with Salt Lake City to be followed with the hottest March on record. And this goes back to 1874. It doesn't mean that 1874 was that warm. It meant that's when we started taking records, but who knows before that point. Another way to look at this is we've shifted a month ahead. So the average February temperature is 34.2 degrees. And when you look at January, we actually were warmer than what you would typically see in February. The normal March average temperature is 43.6, and then we had the actual February temperature of 43.9. The normal high temperature for April and April 7th and 8th is 59 degrees. We saw that in March, and we, we have just been so hot all winter, and that's the difficult part. When you look at the snowpack as of April 7th, this is what we see. And really, this is when the snowpack should be at their maximum. We should have um, an abundance of snow. And really understand where we measure snow is in the north-facing tree-line slope. So these numbers are actually inflated because south-facing aspects, low elevation snow has been totally gone due to that heat. And really, all you have to do is, is just look up in the mountains if you're up there. Anything south-facing or low elevation the snowpack is gone. Then when you look at the actual water supply volumes that the Colorado Basin River Forecast Center is forecasting, they're part of the National Weather Service. This is the volume of water that is forecasted to come out of the mountains due to spring snow melt runoff from April 1st through the end of July. And you can see these abysmal numbers. Only 20% out of the Six Creeks area, and that's just to the east of Salt Lake County, 25% the Virgin, 35%. At the farther west you go, the water supply numbers are much worse because of that high pressure that blocked any systems. 
if you go over into Colorado, the numbers are a little bit better. And that's because the storms came up over the top of that high and dropped down. And, and really, they were blocked, but not as bad as we were. And when you talk about the summer rains, we really don't take into account too much on summer rainfall. However, last year, last summer, we had a July that had, you know, normal to above normal precipitation due to monsoons. Uh, the, the actual surge of moisture that occurs in the summertime that comes up from Mexico, Arizona, and into Utah. Then what we had in August was additional storminess during this time, up to, you know, maybe three to four hundred percent of normal in some areas. That's for, as far as precip goes. And then September occurred and more of the same. And what this did was not only put down some nice rainfall, which really doesn't add up to a whole lot. What happened was people used rainwater instead of the stored water in the reservoirs and that made our reservoir contents much better at this time this year than last year at this time, which is kind of different to think of because we've had such a bad year. But this period, July, August, September, last summer, really helped out our, our reservoir contents because people did not use the water in the reservoir, they used rainwater. Okay, there you have it. It's kind of grim, I know, I'm sorry. This is Brian McInerney. This will be the last water supply briefing we'll have this year. Hopefully 2016 water year, which starts in October, will be much better. I do appreciate taking the time to listen to this, and we'll go from there. Thank you.